Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome to Hashtag Pastor Besties. I'm Nicole. I'm Melissa. And today we have a special guest. We do. And we're going to be talking about self-image. Self-image, how you view yourself, what others say about you, and um, some really great things. We've got a really great guest, too. Yeah, Brittany Gilliland. So let's bring her on in today on Hashtag Pastor Besties. So welcome to the show, Brittany. Thank you. We're so excited to have yeah. you. Now, I've known Brittany for a mm, long time. I don't know how long. Like eight years. Eight years. Oh, nice. And I served as her youth pastor for many of those years. And now she's in seminary, and I'm so proud. Um, so Do you yeah. know how I met Brittany? Twitter. <laughs> how do you meet people? <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> this is life. This is life. So today we're going to be talking about self-image. And the reason why we wanted to bring Brittany on to talk about that is because... Why, Brittany? You want to share? Yeah. It's been a process, I think, of me learning, figuring it out, of what that means. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. that's how we all feel about self-image. It really is sort of like... It is a process, and it kind of never ends. It's no. like a it's like a never ending process. Each day, you have to choose to view yourself the way God created you, mm -hmm. rather than the way that maybe the world tells you you should view yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you ever have those days where you're like, I feel you look in the mirror and you're like, I look good. <laughs> like, I just it's like a good like day. I woke mm -hmm. up like this. Yeah. I mean, um, I just assume you feel that way every day, Melissa. No, I don't feel that way every day. <laughs> I mean, there are days that I'm like, I, I can't, I can't, yeah. like, I can't leave the house. I don't want to, I don't want people to look at me. There are days that it just feels that way. Yeah. I mean, and for me, I mean, they've been days. Like, it's not been, I, I, I can't even say that it's been a long period of time. So, like, sometimes it's a morning or sometimes it's day. So what does it feel like when it's not just a day? Uh, I mean, is that something that you've experienced where yeah. it just feels like all, either all the time or what, what is that like? Yeah, I, I think that the process has come this far, but there was also a time where it was every single day. Like, I really don't want to be near people and I don't want people to look at me or to see me. Um, partially because, A, what are they going to see when they see me? Mm -hmm. And then B, the outward. Um, who am I? What do I look like mm -hmm. to them? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's really hard because I think sometimes we think of ourselves one way and then we walk by a mirror and then we're like, oh, wait, <laughs> that's not what I was thinking I look like today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, or pictures. Right. Or, I mean, there's times when I watch some of our hashtag pastor besties and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Do I really right. look that way? Or you, you look at a picture, and it's a good picture if you look good. It doesn't really matter what anybody else looks like, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I don't know what it is, but it's so ingrained within us. Self-image is so ingrained within us. And, mm -hmm. you know, I have a young daughter who struggles with self-image, you mm -hmm. know, and has been since she was in, like, kindergarten because mm -hmm. she's small for her age, and... She's very self-conscious about that. And um, I think as a, as a woman who has really tried to help um, people feel good about who they are, to have a daughter who struggles with that is, like, it's so unfair. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's frustrating. And it makes me angry that the world has already made her feel like she's less than she is, which I think she's beautiful. And she is beautiful. Oh my gosh, she's my child. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Um, at such a young age to be struggling with something so heavy is, um, it's just sort of overwhelming as a parent. Yeah. I think, I, I, I mean, obviously I come from a, the perspective of a woman. Mm -hmm. um, I am a woman. I have, I have been a woman my whole life. Um, and so, <laughs> shocking. I mean, some people. That's true. That's some true. Some people have transitioned. Some people have transitioned. Um, so for me, this is the perspective that I know. Um, so I don't know what it's like to be a male in this world. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like there's a lot of pressure on women. Um, I don't, I personally, I like wearing makeup. I like fashion. I like that kind of stuff. Um, and so I don't know that I have personally felt pressure of someone telling me you have to wear these things. 
Right. Uh, maybe I have, and I don't really realize that's what it is. Um, but is that something that y'all have felt that you have felt like I have to wear makeup, I have to look nice, I have to dress this way, I have to be this way? Um, I mean, I'm sure that we've all felt some of those pressures at some point. Yeah, I think for me it was a family pressure of like we look a certain way when we're like together and in public and we're all doing things together um yeah. and my mom was really skinny and blonde and like perfect um so being the opposite of that and what does that look like um for me personally of wanting to be like her and looking like her and being like her but that's just not reality mm -hmm. um, and I know that now I guess so you've talked about this being a process for you of accepting who you are and what you look like and and who you are what has that process looked like? Um, a lot of bad days, a lot of tears. Um, but ultimately, there's this reassurance that like things will get better, mm -hmm. and things are getting better. Um, and people who are constantly like, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I think it's all been connected um, to who I am, who I'm becoming, and who I have been. And they all just kind of go together. Um, and I think where I've been has shaped the way that I think and the way that I do life um, for the better, even though it was pretty terrible mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. Well, I think you're, if, when you're in those dark spots, if you don't learn from that and if it can't shape who you become and who you help others be, then it is sort of a waste. Mm -hmm. So you have to take those dark times mm -hmm. and find redemption in it, right? So... I was just talking about this um, with a group. We were talking about light and dark images um, and um, how sometimes in some of the places where I've had my hopeless moments or darkest moments that there's been people who I can say have held on to the hope for me when I couldn't mm -hmm. hold on to it for myself. Um, and, and, and someone in the group said, and isn't it interesting that those darkest moments of us, of ours, become the light for someone else? Oh, gosh. Um, that's so and good. I think that's, that's true, that those moments that we have worked, we work through it. Like, you yeah. get through it, you push through it, and out the other side comes something else. Well, it's sort of like, you know, any, anything that has to die to grow, right? Like a seed dies oh, yeah. and decays before it can grow. And um, <clears throat> while we never wish to decay on anybody, it happens because this is life. And Well, you don't have resurrection without <clears throat> the crucifixion. Right. I mean, I think it's Glennon Doyle Melton who says that everyone get, has pain. Every, pain comes to everyone. Um, but suffering doesn't have to. And suffering is when we try to get to resurrection without going through the crucifixion. Mm. That's so good. That's good. Right. It is good. Mm -hmm. We do that a lot, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Because we don't like pain. Well, no. We don't like the hearts. I mean, who does? Well, there's some people who do. But, I mean, we don't like the the pain. We want to get through it. Right. And what's the easy way to get through it? But there's no easy way through it. The, the, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's a recovery process. It's one day at a time. Okay. Uh, and sometimes it's one minute at a time. Sometimes it's just one breath at a time. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that's so important for us as um, leaders and as female leaders especially is to be vulnerable about this kind of stuff. Um, I remember um, when you were in high school, I think for your graduation, I wrote you a letter and said how much of high school Nicole I saw in high school Brittany. Mm -hmm. And and you were like, what? But you're such a strong, <laughs> like independent, fierce woman. Like you love who you are. And I'm like but I really don't some days mm -hmm. and I didn't always. And so for me to be able to be vulnerable with you and to say, I was where you are and this is where you can be. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm like where I need to be either, but you know what I mean? Like you can make it to days where you're proud of who you are mm -hmm. and, and you see God's creation in yourself. Um, but if we're not vulnerable about it, then we can't help people. Right. And vulnerability is hard. I don't want to tell people that, you know, there are days when I hate myself and I hate what I look like, you know, because I don't want to portray that. I want to be the strong, fierce woman who loves who she is and loves who God's created her to be, but that's can't, not reality. But can't you be both? Yeah, you can. I mean, you are both. Absolutely. Like, we're simultaneously all of these things at once. Right. It's not, I'm not just this woman. I'm not just that woman. I am both. 
Right. I'm I'm a hot mess most days. That's true, sister. It is very true. <laughs> and I'm also sometimes I have it together. I'm right. a, more of a hot mess, but I mean, right. Like I can be both at the same time. But if you can embrace those hot messes of your life and be like, but this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And own it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, own who you are. Own the body you've been given. Yeah. Own how God created you to be. Right. right. You know? You do you is, like, my rally and cry yeah. for everything. So like, good. you do you. You have to be who you are. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, like, I have just, it's too exhausting for me to try and be someone else. I've done it for too, I did it for too long. Yeah. That it was just, it's too exhausting. And I don't, nobody knows how to do me better than I do. Can you talk a little bit about that, the freedom that you found in embracing who you are instead of trying to be who you've been told you should be or who you thought you should be? Yeah, I feel like every day I wake up and it's like my birthday or it's like Christmas. Um, something new and something is clicking in a way that's like, oh, okay, I really like these specific things and that's okay. Um, while it hasn't been who I've been before, it's who I am now, mm -hmm. and owning that, mm -hmm. and living into that, too. I love that. Oh, this is a tough topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so share some of your stories in the comments or using hashtag Pastor Besties, um, ways that you have learned how to love yourself, maybe maybe even some of those times when you don't, when you don't quite love yourself. Um, and yeah. uh, and maybe they'll, you'll find a community of people who can help support you uh, and who love you through that process. I think that's the biggest thing. We have to realize that we are all <coughs> in this together, right? We are. We are. It's not, we're not doing it on our own. No. We're not isolated in how we're feeling about these things. Mm -hmm. Everybody has doubts about who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we can share that with one another and hold one another in love and in mm -hmm. grace, um, then great things can come out of it. Yeah. So may you know that you are a child of God, created in the image of God, that you are, your neighbor is a child of God, created in the image of God, and that you are who God has created you to be, and God loves you so very much. So embrace that and live it. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.